If you know what you're doing, the forest is full of uh, trees and plants that you can make drugs from. This is the sassafras tree that grows in Victoria and Tasmania. The bark is a source of the richer oils. So if I was to scrape that bark, it can be used for making MDMA. In Australia, there's as many psychoactive things as there are, say, in South America or in Africa. There are quite a lot of plants that contain DMT, they're ergoline alkaloids, propane alkaloids, MDMA and related compounds. There's many plants in the Australian bush you can process to make what you want that no one knows about. This is a temperate rainforest that we're heading into. And this is our sassafras tree here. It's sort of licorice, bubblegumish type of smell. The bark is the uh, source of the richer oils. So if I was to scrape that bark, I would get that smell very strongly. After they harvest and uh, purify their oil, it's a two-stage process uh, to convert saffron to MDMA. People with a high school degree in chemistry would be able to do it. The ones up in the rainforest of, say, northern New South Wales and southern Queensland are uh, host for a lot of butterflies, some of the prettier butterflies. MDMA butterflies. MDMA butterflies, yes. And there was a lot of butterfly imagery with the, the rave scene in the uh, 90s. Uh, I'm sure they didn't actually know that the the pills that they were swallowing came from trees that were the host plants for a lot of those butterflies, but there is that uh, amusing coincidence. My research is a way to show how many Australian plants there are that are psychoactive. There's a lots of amazing chemicals in the Australian bush. Uh, in fact, some of them we know about, some of them we don't know because not many of them have ever been tested. Down here we have this interesting grass. This is actually a phalaris grass. Scientists investigated it because it was causing sheep staggers. The sheep would eat this grass and they'd stagger off. Even though it's not a native, Australian scientists were the ones who discovered that this is a a uh, useful source of DMT. And of course, the sheep still keep eating it. It's definitely an intellectual passion of mine. Of course, the trouble with society at the moment is not realising the benefit mushrooms, the LSD or the MDMA can have to our culture. There's an interesting tree in Australia, the mountain ash tree. Now, nobody knows why, but there's a published paper from many decades ago from the Australian military uh, research, basically finding out how to mass produce mescaline from its sawdust. Mescaline uh, is the main component of peyote, the small cactus in southern US and in Mexico where it's used in religious ceremonies. If we made the mescaline from the sawdust of this tree, we'd have a, a similar experience. What you'd see, what you'd experience, what you'd hear would be unique for every person and every time. I grow San Pedro. I also grow Peruvian torch and various other South American cacti that are famous for their mescaline. So this is my little uh, work area, my man cave. In Melbourne, we've had a very dry period for the past couple months and now we're finally getting proper rain out there, which is good because it's supposed to be mushroom season and there's a lot of pine mushrooms out there that haven't come up that need to be collected and turned into meals, along with lots of other fungi to be collected as well. 
I like to read a lot. And my special collection is in here. Each of these drawers is a specialized topic. Ayahuasca, Mexican mushrooms that heal the sick. Discovery of mushrooms that cause strange visions. This is one of the LSD drawers. Really good day about microdosing. Albert Hoffman and his discovery of LSD. Albert Hoffman's famous book called LSD, My Problem Child. There's no coincidence that a lot of our tech culture came from uh, California, from San Francisco, soon after the psychedelic revolution. The psychedelics allowed new ways of thinking, especially for people working with this new technology. I have a a love for these plants. I appreciate these plants. They're, they're special plants. In fact, they're, in a way, they're sacred plants for the gift that they give humanity. Being able to think differently, being able to think creatively. But there's so much to there to learn about Australian plants. It's going to keep scientists active for many years yet.